The scripture Reverend Chad read to us this morning tells us, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all gathered together in one room. The followers of Jesus after his death were in a state of confusion. Their world had been turned upside down. Nothing had gone as they hoped. The starkness of a future without Jesus was now real, and they were beginning to take steps to walk into an unknown future. So they all gathered together in one room. I love the way the second chapter of Acts begins because their story is our story. When life hands us the hard stuff, we gather together in one room. When the path is uncertain, we gather together in one room. When we, we realize we cannot go back, we can only go forward, we gather together in one room. Just like the followers of Jesus, we come together and we huddle up and we remind each other of God's love. On Sunday mornings, we gather together in this room, either in person or at home or online, to experience together this place we call home. This beautiful cathedral connects us to each other, and the rituals we share bind us together, whether we come from near or from far. Through the music, the words, the silence, the lighting of candles, and the works of art that grace the covers of our programs, we are led to consider each week who we are and who we are becoming. And even though we come from many places and speak many different languages, each week we hear the love found in this room. And we are reminded that each and every one of us carries the original blessing of God. A blessing that resides deep within our being and deep within all people, both here and everywhere across the earth. On this day of Pentecost, we have gathered in celebration of God's Spirit because we are coming to know from that which is deepest within us and in our daily lives, we are constantly being touched by this divine Spirit. To be honest, it's tempting sometimes to want to stay in this room and never leave. We are living in a world that is constantly changing and becoming more certain every day. And as much as we try to forget all about it, this uncertainty stays with us. Perhaps this is what the followers of Jesus were feeling. Times were rough, the future was uncertain, so perhaps it was best to batten down the hatches and stay inside while the storm raged outside. Yet over 2,000 years ago, the spirit of life had a very different plan. One that took their small vision and poured wind and fire into it and changed what was to what might be. They were all gathered together in one room, and then everything changed. The unexpected happened. Things got out of control. This was definitely not the way things had always been done. And in the midst of all this confusion of an uncertainty, the Spirit swept them out of that room and into a world that was waiting for what they had. The people on the street were just waiting for them to come out and speak about the marvels of God in a language they could understand. And because they dared to leave that room, new rooms opened up for everyone. 
This morning, we remember this great story, the rushing wind, the tongues of flame, and the many different voices all hearing in harmony the pouring out of God's Spirit on all people. In this time, we remember the promise of Jesus the Christ, a promise that is always and forever going to be with us because we know the Spirit is with us whenever two or three of us are gathered in a room together. And in this time, the incomparable power of the Holy Spirit and what we do and share in this time together will empower us to share the good news of God we have found in this place. A good news that is infused with love and life and hope for all the people we meet on all the roads we travel, both now and in all the days to come. In some mystical way, these lofty ideals from so long ago managed to sound a lot like the humility of Bill W. and Dr. Bob, the two people who began Alcoholics Anonymous almost 90 years ago. They believed there was a way to come back to our senses after we had hit rock bottom by admitting our powerlessness and by taking life one day at a time. With that belief, they began to invite people to gather in the rooms that would save their lives. The first followers of Jesus over 2,000 years ago at their rock bottom gathered in one room trying to recover from an unimaginable loss and find a way forward which would begin a movement that has brought all of us here today. That first room, like all the rooms through the ages, became infused with the presence of the divine spirit, a presence that was meant to change the world. And because of the power of that room, all rooms throughout all time carry that possibility. We who have embraced the gift of light and love in all the rooms we have shared now have a responsibility to carry that message to our world. This vital understanding allows us to ask what is probably the most important question of all time. What would our world look like if we, like God, actually loved the whole world enough to carry this message of love to each and every person we meet. On most days, that seems not only improbable, but totally impossible. Yet the black feminist writer Bell Hooks argued that the love we speak of is not some flimsy thing. Instead, she says, love is a force that has the power to redeem, but only if we are ready for redemption. Love will save us and the world, she said, only if we want to be saved. 2,000 years ago, the people huddled in that one room and hit rock bottom and realized they were totally powerless. Through the ages, this scenario has played out again and again in various times and places. The world crashes down around us and we find that we are powerless. But sadly, we know from history, our ancestors often chose not to embrace love or even look for redemption. And if they did embrace some form of those ideals, they were only for them, certainly not for the whole world. And of course, the newness came with the conditions and terms they decided for their benefit. We can no longer afford to make those mistakes. Together, we have to decide who we could be if we were ready for the gift of redemption, the redemption of love. Four short years ago, we were not prepared. We could not have comprehended the rock bottom that was barreling towards us. 
And yet one day at a time, we were given the opportunity to learn how to choose the path that would heal us and the world. From that time, we now find ourselves surrounded by a multitude of rooms, rooms filled with love and hope. 90 years ago, recovery rooms were started. Four years ago, I learned how to use Zoom because Zoom rooms were started. And there are now recovery rooms in Zoom rooms. And there are online sanctuary rooms that will bring us together from around the world to remember who we are and who we can become. At the end of his life, Jesus promised he would always be with the people. It was a promise that was not for a single moment in time. It was a promise that was for all time. And at the end of our reading for today, because of everything that has just happened in the world, those last words written have come to hold great meaning for me. The scripture says, all were amazed and disturbed, and they ask each other, what does this mean? But others said mockingly, they've drunk too much new wine. For years, I hated that ending. Hated it. It seemed so rude. <laughs> and then one day, I was asked to come and give a welcome to the CMALA convention that makes First Church its home for one weekend per year. The minute I stepped on campus, I could hear the party. With almost a 1,000 people in attendance, there was a life and an energy that wasn't coming from just any party. It was coming from the best kind of party. This was a party filled with people who had firsthand knowledge of what hitting rock bottom truly meant. And this celebration was all about sobriety and the miracles they saw every day. If you happened to be walking down Commonwealth Avenue or 6th Avenue that weekend and didn't know what this party was, you could have easily said they have all drunk too much new wine. But that was not so. In the room 2,000 years ago, don't let anyone tell you there wasn't a party. And it was also the best kind of party because for that one day, they were all gathered together in one room and they were all beyond grateful. I love the Pentecost story and I can listen to it again and again because each time I hear it, it comes alive for me. Thankfully, the people in that room on that day didn't stay in the room. They took that memory with them and each one carried the story that would change their lives forever. It was a story of new life and love and it was a story that only got better as they lived it each day, one day at a time for the rest of their lives. So this morning, it is with a heart full of gratitude that we say, may it be so on this day and all the days to come. May it be so for all of us. Amen.